Hi, everybody. I'm Todd McKim, along with the coach, and welcome to this week's show. We'll take a look back at that great victory over the UCLA Bruins in the Rose Bowl. Preview next week's game against the Stanford Cardinal right here at Autzen Stadium. Have a couple of uh, player profiles as well, and be joined by one of the players of the game later on in the program. Well, coach, if nothing else, you're making things real exciting for Oregon fans, and I'm sure too exciting for you and your staff and your players as well. But what a great win. You know, your team had to come from behind in the first two games. This game, you took the lead, had a nice sizable lead. UCLA came storming back, not once, not twice, but three times, yet you were able to hold them off. I think you have to give credit to UCLA. They're a great football team. They have great athletes. Uh, we didn't know how to handle the lead. You know, first time we'd really <laughs> had a sizable one, and, and I think we relaxed a little bit. They made some big plays. Uh, Certainly, we kept it exciting. I thought we had a chance to put the game away several times in our own mistakes, a couple fumbles, uh, down one down deep in our territory, and two that prevented us from getting at least field goals, which I think would have given us a pretty good safety margin. Cost us. Uh, it was too exciting for me. I'm, I'm getting older by the minute here, and I, I, I need to, I'd like to have a whole Hummer where we can enjoy it. Play some other people. You know, one of the things we had to do is keep our starters in the entire game, and I think we're fortunate. But again, I think the character of the team coming down and, and showing it. We gave up two big plays in a row, which is not what I believe Dan Green is, is about. But we held them out at the end. Uh, they went 99 yards, but they didn't get the one yard they needed. <laughs> Thank goodness for that. You know, it was a game where offense is uh, pretty much ruled. 900 yards of total offense in this game. And as you can add up the points, uh, plenty, 69. But yet, the final play of the game, it came down to a defensive play. And what a play it was. Oh, great play. Great effort. And I, I remember asking in the locker room, because I, I couldn't see from angle. Who made the tackle? And the kids answered, Dan Green. And I thought that was very appropriate. Uh, several people in on that play. And they chose to run it, which, uh, you know, at that, when you're, when you're two yards away, you can do anything that you want. And uh, I thought it was great rallying by our defense to get there. Certainly, Jaya Figueres and Lamont Woods and Des Bird. But I think uh, the two DBs came up and made the big hit to keep him out of the end zone. Offensively, once again, it was the balance of your offense that I think kept UCLA off balance, uh, off track. And the big surprise this week, I think, was A.J. Jelks. Uh, he hadn't had many carries coming in, and yet he leads your team in rushing and had a big touchdown. A.J., we have, we've brought him along, you know, converted from linebacker. He's a big young man that runs well. He can catch the ball. He was a tight end in high school, so it wasn't a big stretch to move him to fullback. Uh, he's been blocking better, and we decided, I've talked a lot to the offense, but we need to take some of the load off of Ricky Whittle. I don't want him carrying the ball 30 times a game. He can do that, but again, we need to be more diversified. A.J. gives us a weapon now. He can run with the ball. Obviously, good speed, scored the touchdown, another long run. And it also helps to balance, it keeps the defense off balance a little bit, as you said, and gives us another weapon. I think it's very exciting for us. Defensively, you had a big uh, uh, task in front of you. One, you had to face maybe the best offensive line in the nation in UCLA up front and one of the best backs in the country, Abdul Jabbar. He ended up with 127 yards or something like that, but he didn't get the final two yards when they needed it. But they're tough because even though they had a freshman quarterback, they had pretty good balance too. They're a good football team. I said that. That's probably the best offensive line, certainly the best I hope that we face this year. And Jabbar works well with that line. He's a, he's a solid back who, who makes the most of each. And, and they have some other guys. Skip Hicks stepped up yesterday and won you know, one play, and he comes and goes 53 for a touchdown or whatever and runs through some tackles one of the things that i was disappointed in we gave up too many big plays we can't do that and we also made some mistakes that allowed that team to stay in the game with us and and again i'm we're a good football team they're they're a very good football team but to be a great team we've got to eliminate those kind of mistakes we've got to play better overall football certainly cannot give up the big plays Let's talk about the kicking game because that was a, cur a concern <laughs> going into this game because you had some people that hadn't participated a lot in game conditions especially in a rose bowl type atmosphere but Joshua Smith was perfect again, and late in the game had a couple of pretty good kickoffs, including touchbacks. And Bidwell, not only did he punt the ball high, give yourself good coverage, but UCLA did not have a single yard in punt returns, and yet they had a guy averaging over 23 yards of return coming in. No, we, we got great effort. Uh, I think both of our kickers did a great job. Uh, Josh Smith, the, the PAT placements, the field goal at the end of the first half, those are big, big plays. They helped get the momentum back for us there. Uh, maybe the best play was his kickoff after our last touchdown, which he, he squibbed it. We drove it down there. We got great coverage. We held him down inside. Um, Josh Bidwell on the punting. You know, we moved the ball around. He didn't hit the ball every time as well, but we got some great bounces, which is going to happen if you keep working at it. And he boomed the one, rocketed the one. He's capable of doing that. As I said before, I think our kicking game is okay. It's going to get better every week. We have some young players. 
that are stepping up. The biggest thing is the effort on all the coverage and everything else, I think, continued to improve. We, we were a little lax on our kickoff coverage. We had some breakdowns there, which we'll need to address this week. But overall, I was, I was happy because I thought special teams would be a big factor in the game. Mm -hmm. All right, let's take a look at the Pac-10 scores. We'll get into the first quarter highlights momentarily. Here are the other scores that uh, happened during the course of play on Saturday. Oregon State, a loser at North Texas State. Oregon State will open up conference play next week at Arizona State. Uh, Arizona, tough loss uh, to Illinois, but, uh, you know, Illinois, they've, they've had several losses like this over the past couple of years, and uh, I guess they, plan they figured they were going to get one somewhere along the line, and they finally did to get their first win of the year. Ohio State took care of Washington in Columbus, 30-20, to 20, and Nebraska all over Arizona State, 77 points in that ballgame. USC undefeated, they're 2-0, and, oh, and Stanford had to come from behind to tie Wisconsin. We will talk more about the Cardinal later on in this program. First quarter highlights, UCLA won the toss of the coin, elected to defer until the second half. Nice to be back in the Rose Bowl setting. Hey, who's this guy, Danny O'Neill? One of the co-MVPs showing back up there at the NR sideline, and Danny is now actually coaching himself. In fact, he shared some coaching stories with me before the game, but I'll save those. <laughs> so UCLA, uh, second possession actually for them, and uh, Kenny Wheaton off the ricochet. Jayat Figueres got a piece of it, knocked the ball up in the air, and again, the guy that is going to be around the football, Kenny Wheaton, comes up with it. Uh, sort of an errant throw. Uh, and we're fortunate here. The receiver was pretty open, but he led him too much. Jaya had a chance there. Kenny's with Johnny on the spot, makes the play. Big turnover. You know, we got to have those turnovers, and we talked to Gang Green about the idea that we needed possession of the football. Come back early. This is the play action pass. We've been working a lot. Pat Johnson making a nice catch at the sideline. Off the play action fake. So we're faking the ball to Ricky, pulling Tossi out, moving the pocket early on. Tony's back 100%, well, at least 95%. A little rusty at times, but uh, physically healthy. So the ball now with the UCLA 46. We're coming out. We had a good miss. It's sort of a choice route there, and there's a choice for the tight end, a choice for the quarterback. You got the ball to Rick. Rick bounces outside. This, this team has great team speed. It's hard to get outside. They run very well. We talked to Rick about the fact we needed to take the ball up inside. Key third down conversion there. Again to Pat Johnson. A little route that we work later on for the touchdown. Now you go to the big fella three straight times. The big fella on the draw. It's nice to see that guy bulldozing some people. He got up a little high, but on that play, Donnie Edwards hurt his back, and that was a big loss for them. He went out early. And we give the ball on what we call a under force, and again, he gets it all the way into the end zone. We're faking the sweep to Ricky or the, the formation allows us to show that. We're bringing the ball back underneath. Again, you see Paul Wigan leading. Ricky Whittle, nice block there. Really and sprung him, and Jabri Hodge had run his DB into the end zone all the way, and then we just get the ball in there. Nice job. 18-yard touchdown gallop by A.J. Jelks, his second score of the year. Joshua Smith adds the point after. Good start. Good start. And again, it's very important. We talked about the fact that we needed to establish early what we're going to do. This was one of the situations where we're doubling. We're trying to do some coverages to help out, and Kenny Wheaton just got a piece or disrupted that flow. Nice play by Rich Rule coming under on their, their outside slant play. Came through and got a piece of it. And it's better for us to get him before he got started. It was feast or famine with him. So you get the ball back. Here we're going on a little hot route. Same play ran earlier uh, to Josh Wilcox. Does a nice job. Coming up, Ricky Whittle, bouncing it up inside. We talked about the fact needing to run north and south against this team because they ran so well. Graz, nice job of scrambling here, getting down. Graz, you know, nobody has been to L.A. twice, won two games, never been sacked. No sacks, that's amazing. He's a big fellow again. I, I don't like him reaching the ball out quite like that, uh, but I'm going to let he's him do it. He's hungry. He wants that extra yardage, and, I, and he fights. He, he runs through a tackle here. At 245, 250 pounds, he's a load, and he knows what to do with it. Not what a 200-pound safety likes to see coming at him. Now we get the pump fake, and again, this is the play that uh, set up our Rose Bowl touchdown. Uh, we fake the screen to Ricky. Uh, Josh goes out on a blocking path and then turns it up. Graz lays this right where it needs to be and uh, get another score. Shades of Musgrave to Vince Ferry, if I Shades, remember correctly. Shades, same type of play exactly. Years ago. And a point after, and 14-point lead. It's your biggest lead of the season to that point. To that point. 
Yeah. Let's get into the second quarter highlights and a wild and woolly game that never really seemed to have either team gain control. UCLA with the ball early in the second quarter trying to bang in, but the gangrene defense holds inside the 10 yard line. Paul Jensen, Troy Bailey on that last hit. Isaac Walker coming up to drive that ball away. It's scary when the ball bounces like that. You never know who's going to get it. But again, nice job by the defense to keep UCLA out of the end. We talk about that all the time. To get down there, don't let them in, make them uh, settle for a field goal. So it's 14 to 3. A little bit later on, McNown, the true freshman quarterback, scrambles. Great effort here by Bryant Jackson. Great effort. He flushes him in in initially, misses the sack, and then. Uh, Desmond Bird keeps coming. You watch Bryant come back around the backside, just pure hustle, and gets him on the second chance. Knocks the ball out. Uh, great play, great effort, stripping the ball. We've talked about it. And uh, Derek Barnes is there to recover. So, great field position, but unfortunately, the Ducks uh, give it right back on the fumble. At that point, uh, Mark Gregg had been injured, and Kyle Strait came in. And again, anytime we, we get a new center, that's always a concern. But Kyle Strait played the entire game earlier, did a great job, and we had no problems with that. Ricky Whittle there taking the screen. Big play. This is sort of what we call our dual screen. There's a double screen set up. Uh, first read is to Ricky right here. We get what we want, dumps it off, and then Ricky outraces one guy, gets a couple of key blocks down the field. Nice game. Indeed. So the ball is now at the UCLA 30 yard line. Next play is second and eight. Tony flushed and picks up the first down. Tony does a nice job. He's got an idea where that stick is, gets there, gets out of bound, makes the first down. You come back with the inside running game to Ricky, and their, their defense is there, and they play pretty well. At times, here's the play action fake. Get the ball to Aaron Jelks, and again, thought he was going to get caught, but he sidestepped the guy and made some key yards after the catch. And then on first down. Nice play. This is a Bob sweep. And again, Ricky uses his blocking extremely well there. Tossi, the human wall, as I said before, you know, if, if he'll keep running, which he does here, and let the back break off of him, instead of trying to make a move, you see the DB try to play him and ends up being the wrong choice. And Ricky makes it the wrong choice and gets in on touching the end zone. Nice speed there, nice play. So after this point after, you do have the biggest lead of the season. 21 to 3, an 18 point lead with 5.08 to play in the quarter. Now, UCLA makes a change at quarterback. Rob Walker comes in, a fifth year senior out of Texas, replacing McNown. And he uh, seems to try to spark him a little bit, but he takes a sack here. Well, uh, BJ got pressure, and then Reggie Jordan's there for the sack. Uh, again, I, I think what they want to do is let Cade McNown settle down. He made a couple mistakes, fumbled the ball. I think they wanted to just relax him a little bit. And they brought in uh, Walker, who had played significant downs for him the year before. And we, he's not as mobile as Cade, and, and they uh, had a mistake inside. We got some pressure immediately on him. It's hard, like I said, we don't want to let this guy get going. This is a big, this is a second and 22 situation that we give up, and that's very frustrating for everybody involved. Uh, but Jabbar is a great bat. And then moments thereafter, Walker. We we have a blown coverage here. We make a mistake in the secondary. Ball's tipped, and it's a great concentration effort by their receiver. Big play, and we talked about the fact that, again, we cannot give up big plays. So UCLA with a little momentum at this point. It's 21 to 10, but uh, after an exchange of punts, I think late in the quarter, you do a nice job of regaining some of that momentum before the half ends. That's true. We had a choice with about two minutes to go of where they go for it there. I decided not to push it at that point. We got the ball back with some time. We hit some key sideline passes. Here's a nice job by uh, Graz dropping off to Ricky. Makes one move. Gets the ball out of bounds. We got one shot and ends when we take it, don't get it. Line up for the field goal and make it. Again, that helped to get us back some momentum. That was a 39-yard field goal, the first in the career of Joshua Smith. Oregon ahead at the half by a score of 24 to 10 over the Bruins as we pick up the action in the third quarter. UCLA has good field position on a kickoff return and they capitalize with the first score of the second half, although not on that play as Troy Bailey knights in. Troy came off does a nice job here. They're running the counter, beats the one block, keeps leverage, or comes underneath actually, and makes the play. And again, we talked about it. you got to get him stopped before he gets started. Jeremy Asher slices through, comes underneath the counter, which is a good way to defeat that play. So he beat the block right there, come underneath the guard and pulling tackle, and wrap him up. That's Milliner, that's their big back. He's a converted fullback from the tailback. 
Mound, nowhere to go. Jaya Figueres wraps him up. Talk about the sack recorded here because the quarterback goes out of bounds behind the line of scrimmage. This is another one of those what we call coverage sacks too. Notice that he's got a lot of time, and nobody's open, and then Jaya's there, uh, sort of a spy technique on him and, and making sure he gets out of bounds. Now you talk about the kicking game being a factor. A great punt here by Chris Saylor out of bounds right at the two yard line. So you're pinned deep. Yeah. We had a decision there whether to keep the punt team on or the defense. Decided to put, keep the defense on the field. Then in a very unfortunate situation, we fumble, don't cover up the ball down there. Ricky thought he was down or his progress was stopped, but that we have to control the ball. And two plays later. They get in uh, the same option play that they'd been running effectively. Uh, Cade McNown, the freshman quarterback, gets in the end zone. And Merton with the extra point. 24-17. Now the crowd of 42,000 begins to make a little noise. You can sense in UCLA a little more enthusiasm, but Gang Green trying to prevent the comeback. Derek Barnes playing, staying at home, playing for the counter, bootleg or, or whatever, and, and does his assignment well. And this is what happens when we do that. Makes a nice sack. We, we had lost some momentum, though, and in this quarter, obviously, that play hurt us. And we, we've talked about we can't make mistakes down and deep in our own territory. Uh, nice play there by Reggie Jordan again, getting the quarterback, stopping him from scrambling, making a positive yardage. Good pressure, contain him up in the pocket. Reggie comes off of his block, and again, the long arm of the law. Now, unfortunate not to uh, injure an ankle or a knee there as well. Again, the offense uh, unable to move it deep in its own territory, and here they come with McNown again. And that same option play, we struggled. We tried three or four different schemes to stop it. Uh, finally, the best thing was he pitched it, <laughs> and uh, Jaya's there. But we had trouble getting to the quarterback. Our inside linebacker was getting cut off, and uh, we, the best thing, like I said, is we did have to string it out down the line, force him to pitch it. We got the secondary help there on the pitch main. So they take Abdul Jabbar out, bring in Skip Hicks. To, I thought they might redshirt him with a knee injury, and the first time he touches the ball this year. He looks pretty healthy to me, right? He makes a great cut. Unfortunately, runs over Kenny Wheaton, and we got to wrap up and take the guy down low. Obviously, he was pumped up for a first play. Fortunately, he only got one other carry in the game. <laughs> I mean, they've, they've got a, a number of pretty good running backs down there. They always have. And now it's 24-24. UCLA appears to have all the momentum and your team comes right back on the very next play. Big, big play. Uh, Tony hitting Jabri Hodge, make, goes up, makes a great catch. Not just the field position they get, just the momentum. As you talk about, it's key and crucial in that situation that we come back with something, uh, whether it's a sustained drive or a big play, and we actually get both. 49-yard pass and a catch. Graz gets hit there pretty good as he delivers the ball, too. That was one of the, the tougher shots he took, but again, uh, great pass, great catch. And great Hodge. time for it. Yeah, it was, exactly. Back on the ground, Ricky Whittle gets four. Ricky hits it up inside. That's our, our uh, now this was an option play, our, our dive option that uh, the fullback did not hear the call. We option at the line of scrimmage and call it. Graz makes a nice five-yard gain there. Well, here we go into the fourth quarter for the third straight week, and this one's up for grabs. Toss a coin. When we come back, Oregon with a football driving, trying to regain the lead. Ricky hits it up in there. That's our zone play. He follows some good blocking. Uh, we come with a, what we call a counter boot. Draws, makes a key first down here. Uh, great play, pumps him. Come back to the same play, because we liked it, and felt it was open. And Draws, great pump move, which, which stalls him or freezes them, and gets in the corner of the end zone. Great play. I mean, just exceptional effort and a really smart move to pump him, because it really freezes the DB. Right there, when he does that, it freezes the two. Then he aims for the, the near corner of that end zone, extends out, stretches the ball across. That's a great effort. Indeed it is. So after UCLA had tied the game at 24, you come back with a 76-yard drive in nine plays and consume three and a half minutes. R really crucial to answer right there. And we've been fortunate. We've, we've been able to do that offensively this year when we needed to. Uh, some confusion on their part on the kick. We got a good hit there. Uh, great job coming down. Matt Steepen, 51. Matt Steepen. It's great to see Matt. Matt's, we converted him from our linebacker to a D lineman, and uh, he's going to start making his presence known. He certainly did there. So UCLA trying to come back. Oh, 
Kenny Wheaton. I don't know who made the better play here, but I think their receiver to stop Kenny from intercepting that ball. Would have been his second of the game. So now you're trying to run a little clock and score, and it looks like you're going to do just that. Aaron Jelks on the under force again. Counter play to the fullback. Get the big fella moving. Again, this comes off the look as if we're going to give, run the bob sweep out to Ricky. Nice job there. See Ricky out in front, getting a block. Receiver, Damon Ricketts getting a block. And then Aaron turns it on. And he goes forward with it. That's a great job. And great to have another counterpoint to Ricky, too. Come back with Ricky now on the load play. And he almost breaks this one. Uh, keep those feet moving. So you're just short on third down. You've got fourth and about six inches. And unfortunately, the ball comes loose and the Bruins recover. It was fourth and two inches. Had it been fourth and six, I probably would have kicked the field goal right there. But fourth and two, I thought I knew we had the confidence we could get it. Jeremy Asher steps up on the very next series and stops their running back. Uh, now it gets scary. Now it gets scary. They get one-on-one -on -one coverage, and, and uh, Kevin Jordan is a great receiver, and he makes the most of it. I, I, he almost broke that tackle right there. Then they got us on the ropes. They run a reverse, and, and I've never seen us be quite as faked out. Kenny Wheaton comes from the other side of the field and almost makes a play single-handedly against three blockers, but uh, it was a good call at the right time. Caught us wanting to make a play, and uh, they got in. So the extra point ties it up. 31-31 with under four minutes to play. Becomes a rather hair-raising four minutes. We come out. Big play here. Uh, first down to Debris Hodge. We also get the ball out of bounds. We had plenty of time. We knew that. I think we had all our timeouts left. But the key was, again, just execution. Uh, Tony off the play fake. Nice job. Uh, Debris, good catch and get out of bounds. Such poise and composure in this drive. Uh, I think it shows a lot about your team. Ricky Whittle, nice job. Again, big gain. And then I believe he got out of bounds. If not, it was a first down. And this is the play off of the boot that Graz had scored on. So we have the companion play again. They're looking for Graz coming off. Ricky slides outside. And uh, good job by Chris Mack there blocking. Watch out. There's some be Ooh. Come in there. Get hit. You got to go find them. Don't let yes. them go find you. Here's a big play in the game. We knew that they would think we'd go for the first down. We'd call a pump or a uh, what we call 756 and go. Had both receivers. Uh, draws through to Chris and just gets tripped up. Uh, I was hoping he'd score on that, but then again, we want to take more time off the clock too, so that was okay. Again, you can see both he and Pat have gotten behind their people. Nice catch, just what you call a shoestring tackle there, but we're first and goal from the three or the four. This is the second down play. Yes, and this was a scary play. This is one that Tony and I are going to talk a lot about. Uh, because it was thrown back across the grain, which is very difficult down there, very scary. But you'll have to talk to him about this, too. Well, I'll talk about this. He made it a little more exciting than it needed to be. We got a nice route, nice catch by Chris Mack. Gets his foot down. Uh, we decided to take one more shot and get the ball in the end zone rather than just kick the field goal. And again, nice extended catch. Get that one foot down in bounds. Uh, big, big play. Great drive. The extra point is good. It makes it a seven-point game. The only you know, negative is that UCLA still has about a minute with which to work. I thought a minute and two was, was, was that we had done pretty well. And, and uh, unfortunately, like I say, they, in two plays, they cover about 90 yards. And this is sort of put up for grabs, and we're not in good position. Uh, great catch by their receiver. Come back the very next play, and they split our bracket coverage. And again, uh, great play by their receiver. Great catch. Uh, I thought we should have defended it better, but again, on that point, we're on the ropes a little bit. They try to run the option in. And uh, we stop Cade McNow, thank goodness. So it's uh, second down and goal. Nothing doing there. Nothing doing there. Nice defense by Alex Molden. Great job of defending. Here they try to throw a flat pass. I wish they'd have completed that because maybe the clock would have run out. Instead, they have four seconds left. Fourth down, they have no uh, timeouts remaining. Your team actually took a timeout to set up the defense. They go to Abdul Jabbar and a big collision near the goal line, and he is denied by inches, and Oregon wins the game. Needless to say, that is our play of the day. Big, big play. And again, we were in our hot group. We had what we call mixer bracket. We're trying to bracket the receivers here with these two receivers, with these three DBs, these two receivers with these three DBs. He is on him. 
Uh, and what happened is they ran the ball, which sort of surprised us a little bit, but they ran their outside slant play, blocked their tight end down, pulled the guard and tackle around, and it's like a handoff sweep. Their receiver ran off here. Lamont Woods came off him, does a great job. Jaya Figueres fills from the inside. Those two are primary hits on the play. Des Bird gets out here from the outside, and those three kept him out of the end zone. And we're thinking pass. We're in a pass-prevent defense, and again, it's a pretty good call. From the two-yard line, I think you can call, make any call down there, and it's good. But great pursuit, great angles, and great effort by uh, Lamont Woods at corner, Jaya Figueres at safety, and Des Bird inside. We had a little stunt going on this side that I show you. Again, for better pressure on the passer and contain, but that's the play of the day. All right, let's see it not once, not twice, but three times. Here's the up high shot. Again, you can see that, the guard tackle pull. Uh, Gene Jackson takes one block. The three guys, Des Bird from inside, Lamont and Jaya from the outside combine, and it's a great effort because he's got his pad level lowered. He's heading for the end zone, and right there, that collision stops him. His head was about six inches away. The ball never got to more than about a foot and a half, two feet. Here you can see it again, Lamont and Jaya, and then Dez moves the pile sideways. Great, great defensive stand. <laughs> There's the oh. Ducks, a uh, happy, relieved group. Desmond Bird right there, 99. We'll talk to Tony a little bit later on in the program. Uh, a great feeling. These guys are making me old before my time. I'll tell you what, Kaz and I are gonna be about the same age here and we keep playing like this. Great, great, win. great win. Yeah, you're three and zero, one and zero in the Pac-10. Your final game in the month of September, and I guess it's a momentum game. You'd like to continue that through the end of the month, and then with the week off, uh, head into the month of October. Obviously, we'd like to stay undefeated in the league. Uh, like to get through it without any injury, so we can use that uh, extra week off the bye to get healthy. Uh, but I, I don't think, you know, I think the team understands we can't rest on our laurels. We're at a point where we continue to improve, and that's the first thing we look at. And I don't know, I don't care about who we play as much as us getting better ourselves. A reminder, uh, tickets will be at a premium. You get out there Monday and get your tickets early in the week because there'll be a big crowd at Autzen. Until next week for The Coach, I'm Todd McKinnon. So long, everybody.